woman, the seventh a woman to be screened, which means that uh, a few of the people that have not been screened, uh, will, the remaining number of people who have not been screened are men. Uh, we'll start off with uh, uh, Mr. Clement I.K. Uh, Anade Agba, who's the nominee from Edo State. Mr. Joffrey Onyama has not been screened as well. That's the nominee from Enugu State. Uh, from Kano, uh, Mr. Sabo Nanono has not been screened either. Mr. Lai Mohammed. Uh, from Kwara State has not been screened as well, and Engineer Saleh Maman from Taraba State. Uh, those are the people remaining uh, during this particular screening exercise. And now we have another nominee to be screened by the Ninth Senate, uh, Prince Clement Ikanade Agba, uh, who has 30 plus years of work experience, 25 of which have been in the oil and gas industry. Eight years in between spent uh, on, on leave of absence working for the state government, but we will be listening to the questions that will be asked uh, Prince Clement Ikanade Agba and what answers he will be giving uh, to those questions shortly. Uh, spent a lot of his working years with Chevron Nigeria uh, PLC and we'll be looking forward to uh, what he intends to bring to the table if appointed minister. So much colleagues, the next nominee is Prince Clement Ikanade Agba, the nominee from Edo State. Prince, you are welcome to the Senate Chamber, and we have your CV that you can still choose to emphasize on anything that you feel the Senate needs to take note and you can equally speak to anything that you might have omitted from your CV. You can speak to the Senate. His Excellency, Senate President, Senator Ahmad Ibrahim Awan. His Excellency, Deputy Senate President, Senator Kovi Omo Agege, the principal officers of the Senate, permit me at this stage to specially mention the minority leader whose student I was in 1985 at the Bender State University where I read economics. <laughs> Distinguished Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, my own Senator, Senator Francis Ali Mikena, representing the Do Not, my fellow alumnus of the Bender State University, a friend and a brother, Senator Clifford Odia, representing the Do Central, and my senior brother, a man I look forward to so much because of his oratory skills, Senator Pharmacist Matthew Rogide, representing Edo South. It is my honor and my privilege to stand here before you to be screened as a nominee for ministerial appointment into the federal cabinet of our country. Let me use this opportunity to express my profound gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, who has singled me out and found me worthy 
to be in his cabinet. I had the singular opportunity of meeting Mr. President on November 8, 2016, when he visited Edo State to commission some projects. My governor then, Comrade Adam Salio Shomole, gave me the opportunity to take Mr. President through two projects of mine. One was the Queen Ede Gully Erosion Site in Benin, right inside Benin City, a gully that had consumed a public school and was about consuming a Catholic school, a Catholic church. The other was the commissioning of Siloco Road in a flood basin that had defied solution for over 30 years in an area popularly called the Teacher's House area in Benin City. This is an area where solutions that have been provided in the past had failed, and we were told that it was because there are mermaids in the area, what we call mummy water, and that is why the equipment could not work. But I told Mr. President and took him through how we had to do the designs how we had to take the waters away. And I still recall very much his comments that day and his prayers for me. That is how we met. And I also want to thank Comrade Adams Ali Oshomole for giving me that opportunity, without which Mr. President would not have noticed me. I give gratitude to God Almighty for his grace and his favor upon me. I am Prince Clem Abba. I graduated from the Bender State University, Ekoma, now in Brusali University, in 1985, where I read economics. I also hold two MBAs, one from the University of Benin, and the second MBA from the Arizona State University. Tempe, Arizona. This time I specialize in supply chain management. I have spent over two third of my 30, over 30 years working career in the oil and gas industry, in the upstream section, in the functions of supply chain management. I served my company in various SCM functions and capacities in Nigeria, in Houston, and in Tengiz, Kazakhstan. I have attended several management and leadership training programs within and outside the country. Two of them are certificate programs in leadership and also in customer focus from the uh, Harvard, Harvard Business School in Boston, Massachusetts. With prices of crude oil being unstable, fluctuating, and also being on a declining side, profit margins are beginning to be eroded. You will recall what happened sometime in 2015 when prices of crude oil fell even as low as $28 per barrel. It created a lot of problems worldwide. And as a country, Nigeria, we are a mono-dependent uh, economy, and we rely so much on crude oil. So it means that anything that affects the price of oil directly affects the Nigerian economy. And so we were in distress. I am saying this to portray the, the, the position of supply chain management in the industry. If you look at the total spend in the oil industry, two-thirds of it comes from supply chain management. We spend it on behalf of others. So what is this supply chain management? It is that function that takes care of all materials procurement and the movement of those materials and people to the locations that they are required to be. So this includes what we will call operational procurement, 
for some little things where you do three bids and a buy. There is what we call the strategic procurement and contracting, which are for the big uh, items. It takes a time it's because it's a process. You don't just do a three bid and then you walk away. If you do that, you end up with what we say in procurement as a pack of dust. Supply chain also involves aviation, involves marine, warehousing, transport, and then our travel. So you can see how large it is. And in these functions, we also have a market intelligence uh, section. These are the people who look at prices of commodities across the world, prices of the materials, and feed those of us in the office with this information so that we can do our analysis that we use in putting contracts in place. I, during the period 2001 to 2006, I had the privilege of being the material superintendent for Chevron Nigeria. What that meant basically is I was the procurement manager and we had offices, buying offices, in Warri, in Port Harcourt, in Lagos, in London, and in Houston that were responsible to me. I was embarrassed once when I went for the oil industry-wide materials management meeting and was talking with my other colleagues and we were looking at the value of local content spend. And I found out that we were the least in the industry. At that time, it was 17%. I made a vow that I would ensure that there is a turnaround. And by the time I left in 2006 for Kazakhstan, we had grown the value of spend from 17% to 93%. Today, our local content spend is 100%. I'm glad we have a Senator Stella Odua here. I am sure she can testify to this. She was a major player, and uh, as procurement manager, I had a lot of uh, dealings with her around some of contracts. You can round up. On my, on my return to Chevron in 2016, I was charged to do a value streaming uh, mapping. This is with a view to looking at how to reduce our costs and optimize our operations in a very challenging uh, sector. I am a process-driven person. I do not just base my solutions on immediate costs. I do a deep dive to understand the root cause of the issues before offering solutions. In other words, we do not just throw money at a problem. I am passionate about what I do wherever I find myself. I am committed to positive change and development of my fatherland. This mentality was brought to bear on my work during my about eight years as commissioner in Edo State, where I was commissioner for environment and public utilities, and I was also commissioner for land survey and housing for a few months. Permit me, Mr. President, sir, to speak through some of the things or challenges I met. Try, try it round or so that people can ask you questions. Yes. In Edo, you all know that we had an action governor in two-time governor uh, Ogbemudia. So a long time ago, roads were constructed. The cities were well planned. But over time, there's been a lot of infrastructural growth in terms of buildings and all of that. But since he left, no other government concentrated on building primary drains. And primary drains are what defloors a city. When you go into a city, you see roads and you see side drains. We call those secondary Drains. They do not defraud anything. They only protect the roads. So if you really want to defraud the city, you have to do your studies and put in place a stormwater master plan, 
build those primary drains. They are very expensive, so a lot of people run away from it. Most of them are also hidden. They are not visible to the eyes, so it's difficult to show them. In our own time, what we did as we were building them, we were taking pictures and keeping a record for posterity so that people can get to see them. And it is this technology that we use in taking care of the teacher's house area where over 200 homes had been lost. A lot of people had, uh, 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 had, had died. But I am glad today that that's a legacy that we have not left, that people cannot drive through that road and that all those who abandoned the area and have put for sale in their houses are now back, they've renovated their homes, and they now show for rent. When I got into the ministry, I saw that the average income of the ministry, IGR, was 45 million for about six years. And I thought that that wasn't uh, good enough. At the time I, I left, I had grown that amount to 450 million annually. I also focused on our forestry. Edo used to be known for wood. And generally, a state should have about 25% of its land mass as reserves. But when I got in, Edo only now had about 5% of its land mass as reserves. So I was committed to ensuring that we not only protect the forest, but we regenerate it. And that we have to have a sustainable management to ensure that legal logging takes place, and as they do that, we move people from some reserves to the other while we are regenerating. And the key to regeneration is your nurseries. So I had to increase our nursery capacity from 200,000 nursery trees to 650,000, which we started planting throughout the period. Thank you very much. I believe I am willing, I am able, I am prepared and ready to serve our country, Nigeria. So, uh, so much colleagues, before we start taking the questions, let me welcome Senator Uzamare. Senator Uzamare once represented the Benin Kingdom in this Senate. Senator Uzamare, you are welcome. Senator Yusuf Aubakari Yusuf. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. and my distinguished colleagues. Uh, I have just perused your CV and I have uh, areas to ask you on. One, in the area of the shipment inspection. Two, in the area of crude oil export documentation. And three, in the banking transactions. Now, my questions are, all your, most part of your life you work in Chevron. And Chevron has been exporting crude oil. Now, I want to find out from all the years you have worked in Chevron, question number one. Uh, have they been repatriating export forces as required by law into the Nigerian bank? That's question number one. Uh, question number two. I want to tap from your knowledge, although we have heard earlier on about exporting our crude oil, either in CIF, or in FOB. If you can further enlighten us on this, why we shouldn't be exporting our crude oil on FOB. Thank you very much. Senator Lawrence Rijakpo. Thank you, President of the Senate, sitting as chair. My name is Lawrence Rujakpo. I represent the good, productive people of Bayasa West Central District. Uh, the first question is, you've been in the Ministry of Environment, and so we have this argument that is raging that Nigeria has not been able to utilize its capacity of turning waste to wealth. 
if you are fortunate to be in the Ministry of Environment, what will you do to ensure that the massive, huge waste we generate in Nigeria is converted to useful purpose in terms of waste to wealth? That is one. The second question is also has to do with the area where you have done very well. We have a lot of erosion sites, especially very active erosion sites in the southeast of Nigeria. What would be your recommendation in terms of solving this problem of erosion, especially in the maybe majority of the old eastern region, what we call classified the eastern region, comprising part of uh, uh, Delta Edo, and then majority of uh, South South, especially the area between uh, Cross Rivers and the uh, Akwai Bomb States. What will you do to ameliorate the issues of this uh, erosion? Thank you. Senator Ifanyoba. Alamba South. Mr. Nomini, uh, from your CV, you have a vast experience in oil and gas logistics. My first question is to ask you issues surrounding strategic reserve for Nigeria. Presently, NFPC always say they have 45 max. 45 percent, 45 days sufficiency in terms of uh, petroleum reserve, refined petroleum reserve. And um, 80 percent of the reserve is being laid on vessels in the water by its suppliers, leaving us to a deficit of close to a billion dollars every year on doom orange. Noting that we don't have a strategic reserve as a nation, what will you do if you find yourself in the Ministry of Petroleum to plumb these leakages in terms of ship to ship supply, strategic national reserve, and uh, secondly, we are also losing a lot of money when we leave petroleum, petroleum products through a political um, path. Taking products from, for example, from Lagos to Onisha, the inefficiency in PEF, Petroleum Ecological Fund, to site a depot, strategic depots in strategic locations in the country. For example, if you have a product going to a station, a filling station in Malaysia, you have to take that product to Enugu Depot in order to register the product. And then you have to also drive the product back to Malaysia, taking you a journey of close to 40 kilometers. And by so doing, you may be coming back from Enugu and you may lose your product. I think this is inefficiency in management. So if you find yourself in the Ministry of Petroleum, what will you do to ameliorate this and then plug these leakages? Thank you. Senator Ama Michael Nachi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, Mr. Nomini, I am highly attract um, attracted to your skill. You know, contract management, procurement management, and heavy engineering management. Looking at your core profession as economist, I've looked at all these your skills. This present time that Nigeria is talking about wastages from procurement officers, including engineers, quantity surveyors, and others. I looked at it, now you are coming to the Federal Executive Council, that's the executive. 
And coming from private sector, which is a very heavy organization like Chevron. Now, if you look at all this, your skill, I have not seen any model that you use to create this wealth into government settings as a result of wastages and corruption. And of course, some coal pipelines we use in stealing money. I guess, let me go a little further. We have EPC, engineering procurement, I mean, engineering procurement contract model, and the bills of quantities model. None is mentioned here as you, as you have ever used it. How do you think, with this your chain, supply chain management, which will be of help to our BPP, will come to play? Thank you. Only one question. You can respond to the questions, please. The question around tank uh, storage or uh, storage uh, depots across uh, uh, the country. Uh, f first and foremost, I, I think we need to ensure that we, we are self-sufficient in the products that we produce ourselves, I mean in refining our products. We need to get the refineries working because, like you just said, we are talking about strategic uh, uh, reserves. But what are we reserving? We are reserving the, the, the things that we are bringing into the country. Where supply chain comes in is if we are able to fix our refineries, which we can, because turnaround maintenance on refineries is not rocket science. In Chevron, we, we do a turnaround every two years. And our supply chain team lead the teams that do all of this. In the industry, what we do, the fact that I am supply chain does not mean that I work alone. I have to work with cross-functional teams. The experts in those particular areas. My own is to provide advice as to what should be done. And the reason for this is simple. If you put engineers in one room, they can only think like engineers. And if you bring lawyers and put in one room, they can only think like lawyers. But if you are going to build a house and you, you think you don't need a lawyer or a supply chain person, you will build a house on another man's land. But if the lawyer is there and is present, in those meetings, as a team, it will call you to order that the lease on this land is only one year left and we can't put a facility of $100 million on such a, a place. Similarly, for supply chain, you are also building that house and you need to move in equipment. You have to engage the supply chain people because that's where you have facilities and management. They are the people to move the items into the house. So if engineers just build the building and at the end of it you're unable to move the materials into the house. It becomes a waste of uh, resources. So I believe in first things first. We need to fix our refineries. It is doable and we have the resources in country. We don't need to bring in expatriates to have it fixed. Today in Chevron, the professionals who run Chevron, about 90% of the employees at, uh, 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 Nigerians. We have few expatriates here and there that do the work. So that is to say, we have the capability, we have the ability to do the work. On the issue of erosion uh, site, which is across the eastern zone up to Edo, when you look at the nature of our soil, it is very loose. Most of the gully erosion sites that we have, uh, we have, at least let me say 95% are caused by us. We are shooting ourselves in the foot. I mentioned about Queen Edda a few minutes ago. What caused Queen Edda? A road was constructed, dual carriageway from Benin to uh, Onicha. Cross culvert was made to take away water from one end to the other, but it wasn't channeled to the final watershed. 
And this is because we are looking at what people call cost, but it's actually price. Because for it to be cost, it has to be life cycle from the beginning to the end. We also look at maintenance and all of those. So over the years, that gully developed. Gullies or erosion, they are very ungrateful to their benefactor. What do I mean by this? Build your house, channel water out. You will see you will have a gully. As water keeps flowing, a gully will develop and it will come towards you. You are the benefactor of providing the water, but it will consume you. So we need to have a lot of change of attitude. You know, people need to be enlightened so that they understand how these gullies are created. Once we do that, we will spend less money in maintenance or trying to reclaim these gully sites. For waste to wet, again, it's another issue that is behavioral. It has to do with us. At the moment, all our wastes are commingled. They are not segregated. And so because they are not segregated, it creates a lot of problem to turn them from waste to wet. If you keep biodegradable materials in one uh, waste bin, those biodegradable materials can be used for fertilizer. You can also use those uh, biodegradable materials to produce energy. So, but when you mix biodegradable with plastics and medical waste, it becomes difficult to use them. So plastics have to go in a plastic waste bin, Papers have to go in a paper waste bin. The medical waste needs to go in a medical waste bin so that they can be incinerated. And then the biodegradable on its own. And this starts from the home, from the house, our individual homes. Once we do that, then it becomes easy and less expensive to create wealth from, from waste. The issue around export uh, process uh, repatriation is not an area for me in supply chain management. What you have on my CV is a crude export documentation with customs, which was my first job in 1990 when I joined uh, Chevron. That function now has left supply chain management back to the crude export uh, group. So I really do not have uh, details about that and I would not want to tell a lie. Same thing for the CIF and FOB. It's not an area that we handle in supply chain management. It's a different function altogether. Okay. Uh, all right, before, before, before he takes a bow, let me invite Senator Francis L. McKenna, Senator Matthew Rogide, and Senator Clifford Odia, in that order. Please be brief, brief. Thank you, Mr. President, City of Chair, and the Sewage College. My name is Senator Francis Ali Mikena, representing the good people of Edo North. <laughs> Mr. President, I know the nominee very well. First and foremost, let me thank the President, the Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, for nominating my, one of my constituents. So far, the first so far since 1999. My constituents, the people of my constituents, are very happy for the nomination. It is pertinent to say that the Edo State Caucus in the Senate approved this nomination. This nominee standing is a fit and proper person to be so nominated. He has a good credentials. You could see the flow from his mouth. And he worked very well. Yeah. So he, he worked very well as a commissioner in Edo State. And uh, he will bring that weight of experience to the national level. And it's going to be a value added to the cabinet of the Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues. 
I want you to support this nomination and to allow him to take a bow and leave. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Matthew Rogire. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting on the chair. I'm Senator Matthew Rogide, and those out. Mr. Chairman, my distinguished colleagues, I don't think I can thank this state enough. Like I said the other day, when we were talking about the other nominee from our state, I said the tenacity with which, of course, this state has handled this confirmation exercise. I think I'm thrilled by it. And I cannot thank Mr. Chair too much. But more importantly, on behalf two of our caucus, the two caucus in the Senate, we want to immensely thank Mr. President for nominating these two persons. Mr. Prince Clement Agba is one of those discoveries that we found in the government of Comrade Adam Shomole. Mr. Chairman, you recall that. We came to tell you that for the very first time, across party line, we have shown interest and our delight in this nomination. And this, of course, what you have you know, brought to bear in this Senate, that there is conviviality, there is amity among we senators across party line. Today, I stand on behalf of my other colleagues to tell this Senate that we are acting in unison over this nominee. We support him. Prince Clement Agba, all the things that he did in the dossier for eight years, all the one he had to do with urban renewal, all he had to do with environmental sanitation, and I record the remediation of over 105 active blood and gully erosion sites. They were spectacular for all of us. So he sold himself. The only thing we will say to this Senate is to tell Prince Clement Agba to still exercise that knowledge, deal and zest to move our country. I very much believe the environment, because part of the emotions that came on this floor, Mr. Mr. Chairman, you will recall, you will recall, only last week, this issue of gully erosion came up and all the resolutions from the southeast to the south south to the southwest and to the north, we said we need urgent attention. This is the man, by the grace of God, that can help Mr. President, help the Federal Executive Council to get the remedy that we deserve. Thank you very much, and congratulations, Mr. Nominee. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, please. I want to second the motion that was moved by Senator Francis Ali Mikena that this nominee takes a bow and go. Thank you very much. Yeah, the Mr. Sir. I can see in addition to your contribution in the Senate, you are also recommending him to Mr. President for an appointment to a portfolio. Yeah. Senator Clifford Odia. Mr. President, my very distinguished colleague, I'm Senator Clifford Akimimona Odia, representing Edo Center Senatorial District. Mr. President, my very distinguished colleagues, let me begin by congratulating this, uh, my very good friend, brother, Mr. Clement Agba as a serial nominee. Let me also use this opportunity to thank Mr. President Muhammadu Buhari for yet sending another fine product from Medo State as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have all seen, Mr. President, my district colleagues, that this is a very fine product. It has shown capacity in virtually all the assignments that have been given since he started, uh, you know, you know, ready services to this great nation, all I can say, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, 
This product has shown capacity in virtually all the assignments that have been assigned to him. I want to join my colleagues from Edo, uh, PDP, or PDP caucus and APC caucus that will tell you that we are all united in supporting this, this uh, nominee. That we should uh, please allow the nominee to take a bow and go. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. I can see that both the APC and PDP caucuses in Edo have adopted the nominee. Distinguished colleagues, I think the nominee has answered all the questions put on him. Even though there is a, still a long list of colleagues who have raised their hands to ask the questions, but I think time would not permit those questions asked and answered should be representatives of the general questions that everyone would have asked. So with this, I will put the question. Is it the wish of the Senate that the nominee takes a bow and go? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Take a bow. And Prince Clement Ikanade Agba takes a bow, making his way across the Red Chamber and now taking his time to walk out of the Red Chamber. Of course, a very uh, interesting screening session for uh, Prince Clement Ikanade Agba. Spent most of his work, uh, work years at Chevron Nigeria Limited and the Edo State Government House uh, as a commissioner. Uh, along uh, with um, a lot of his uh, work experience, he had a lot of accomplishments, especially in the Edo State uh, Government, uh, the setting up of the Edo State Geographic Information Center, a creation of an updated Benin City Storm Water Master Plan, which was the first in 30 years, according to reports. Also set up the lead, uh, he led rather the Edo State New Map Project, and of course increased ministerial internal generator revenue. Uh, from 45 million naira to 450 million naira per annum, which is an increase of about 888%. Also secured the World Bank funding for the Edo New Map Initiative, led the Edo Urban Renewal Program, and um, reclaimed Queen Ede Gully Erosion Benin. Also reclaimed the Oshobugi Gully Erosion in Aoshi, in Aoshi rather, uh, reclaimed the Ekenwa Gully Erosion in Benin, and fixed the 25 year flooding problem of five junction in Benin City. Also redesigned the King Square in Benin City. So uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of successes and accomplishments. Uh, attributed to uh, this particular nominee. Remember, there is no word on what portfolio he will be handling, uh, but a very interesting set of questions.